Japan was such a special experience for me. I'll never forget it. Leading up to the trip, RCA teachers and staff incorporated various aspects of Japan into our classes. We did research, presentations, took tests, dressed up, and heard many stories. But it's not until you set foot in Japan that you actually realize how amazing it is. You can't fully prepare yourself. No picture, no book, no movie can really prepare you for all the experiences you'll have when you get there. The Japanese are some of the most friendly people on Earth. Almost 38 million people spread out over 5,000 square miles. Our first stop was Tokyo. It's like the eastern version of New York City, but a lot bigger and a lot cleaner. They take so much pride in keeping the city clean. Even the trash service trucks and the people's uniforms were spotless. Mr. Keigo, our tour guide, was pretty amazing. He used to work in Japanese real estate, so he really knew the lay of the land. The first thing that hits you is just how massive Tokyo is. The roads and monorails go right through the heart of the city. There was a chandelier hanging in one of our tour buses. I've never seen that before. When you look out the window, everyone is getting around on bikes and scooters. There's bicycles and bike racks everywhere. People are everywhere. The crosswalk at Saboya Crossing was crazy. There were hundreds of people trying to cross the intersection. It was crazy just to see all the people coming all at once and you just didn't know what to do and you just froze for a long time. In Ms. Barnes' class, we dressed up like Harajuku girls. So I was super excited to visit the Harajuku district. Bright colors everywhere. Cars are driving down these crowded streets. There's all these little boutiques, cafes, and candy stores. All the young people are out. It's definitely a place I would hang out with my friends if I lived there. There's construction everywhere. Huge, almost futuristic towers are going up. And then you walk a little further and there's a shrine or a temple that looks like it might be a thousand years old. We visited the Asakusa Temple, Tokyo's oldest temple, and it's so pretty. The architecture, all the bold colors and decorations. It really started to feel like we were in Japan. Then all of a sudden, you come up on this huge forest in the middle of the city. It's like Central Park in New York. You walk through a giant Tory gate. There's walking paths, decorations, museums, gardens, and people getting married. It's an oasis from all the business of Tokyo. One of the main reasons for our trip to Japan was to finally meet our student pen pals in the city of Wakayama. Before that, we stopped by one of Tokyo's top schools, Keio High School. The campus was beautiful. People were outside in the nature, there was an art class outside. Mr. Tomio Yamamoto gave us an all-day tour. We helped out with English classes, we went to the science lab and took STEM lessons, the students taught us how to write our names in Japanese, and we also made origami paper cranes. I was so excited about the cranes. After you ride a bullet train, every other train moves way too slow. It's kind of like riding an airplane extremely close to the ground. You can get dizzy by looking out the windows. We took a three hour ride to meet our pen pals at the middle school in Wakayama City. I was pretty nervous meeting Meg for the first time face to face. We were only communicating through email for the past six weeks. The big thing was, not only would I be attending classes with Meg, but I would be living with her for the next three nights. It was kind of scary. We came through these doors into a huge auditorium and everybody was sitting there, waiting on the Americans. So there were these introductions and we learned about the school's history. We danced for them, they danced for us, like they really danced. A traditional fisherman's dance. Mr. Clark conducted a sample lesson the local news was there, it was a lot. Then they took us to a classroom where we finally met our pen pals. They just snatched us and took us right to class. Uh, my name is Nishiura Misaki is so nice. I love her. At first, there was a lot of smiling and nodding, awkward silence, laughing, but we started off with these fun games in the class. Icebreakers, games that didn't require us to speak too much Japanese. There was a bit of a language barrier. The whole time, everyone was like, Chilela, what did they just say? My grandmother on my mom's side is actually from Nagasaki, Japan. And ever since I was three years old, she's been speaking to me in Japanese, and that's how I learned most of the language. I was surprised of her, so I talked to her in, in Japanese and English, and she talked to me to Japanese and English. So that is good for me and her to study each other. So I was 
very happy for her to come to my house. There may have been a language barrier, but laughter is universal. Being able to joke and laugh about funny times allows us to connect about things that we have in common. They treated RCA students and staff to a special cooking class. We learned how to prepare these Japanese treats from scratch. We had our little head bandanas and aprons. You should have seen Mr. Brown. We watched the teacher make a few, and then we made them ourselves. We drank traditional tea with it. It's so cool that they teach these skills in middle school. One of the traditions that we followed every day when we entered the school was we took our shoes off. I like how they took pride in the school in that way. You notice how clean the school is. Hallways, bathrooms, classrooms, everything. It didn't really register that we wouldn't be going back to the hotel until our homestay parents came to pick us up from school and we're putting our bags in the car and driving off. The RCA staff was like, bye, we're free. On the ride home, I saw some of my classmates actually walking home with their pen pal. It's so safe in Wakayama. I remember driving over a huge bridge and when we got to our house, it looked like a painting. It looked like Mr. Miyagi's house from Karate Kid. With the tree and the rock garden in the yard, it was so beautiful. She showed me around, and as I was walking around the house, I noticed little trinkets on the desks and the tables. It caught my eye because making miniatures is also a hobby of mine. The next day, we really dove into academic studies. I was impressed with the advanced concepts they were studying in math. My pen pal was doing a great job making sure I wasn't completely lost. So in America, we have PE. Basketball, football, soccer, tennis, things like that. They have that in Japan too, but they also have this. Calligraphy is way more complicated than it looks. But it was fun though. There's a proper order of strokes, the amount of pressure, straight lines, diagonal lines, dots. It's very artistic. I think Miss Barnes took the top prize for calligraphy. She also had the best lantern too. We learned about the history and constructions of lanterns. They had experts in there teaching us everything we want to know. The best part was painting and putting them together ourselves. Cleaning up the school at the end of the day. In America, we have janitors, but in Japan, we did it ourselves. We slept the floor, we mopped the floor, we cleaned the desks, windows, and mirrors. It was actually kind of fun. It went by way too fast. It did not feel like three nights at the homestay. It felt like I just got to know Masaki and it was already time to go. We threw a party at the school and all the families were invited. We showed out with the dance. They loved it. やっぱりそこが一番いいところだと思ったし、やっぱりどの晩だったらそのいつも静かだけど、そのね周りを楽しませてくれたり、最後の歓迎会、お別れ会の時でもダンスを教えてくれたりして、あなたたちといててとても
The whole island is cinematic. You can't go wrong with the camera there. And then we were headed back to Tokyo to get our last little taste of the big city life. There were food options everywhere. Fancy restaurants and mom and pop shops. I love the sushi and the way the waitresses dress so beautifully. It added to the whole experience. We dined in a restaurant where you catch your own meal. I mean, you really have to grab a fish pole, hook it with bait, and catch your dinner. Your dinner is literally staring right up at you. Like saying, I see you. You know, and I personally wasn't so good at this, so after a while, I did start getting very hungry. I was tempted just to take the net and scoop the fish up, but the whole experience makes you appreciate the food on the table a little bit more. There was one restaurant in particular that took the cake for the craziest restaurant in Tokyo. Robot Restaurant. Words cannot describe this place. Pictures do not do it justice. We were led up into this lounge area where we listened to a robot play music on his guitar. There was so much stimulus on the walls and on the ceilings and on the floor. It was like, where do I look? I was sitting there just like this. I, I was so confused, I had no clue what was about to happen. I thought that was the show. We were getting up, thought we were going home, and they said, show starts in five minutes, go downstairs. At that point, we were literally afraid for our lives. It's like the ocean. You know how things get crazier and crazier the closer you get to the ocean floor? By the time we got to the bottom. This trip has opened my eyes to other ways of life that are just as real and just as valid as our own. I feel so grateful to have been able to go on this trip and make friends with people my age on the other side of the globe. And Taraya, my pen pal, keep being you. You're a special kid with a bright light and a warm heart for others. Continue being strong in the classroom and on the court. And we hope to see you once again one day here in America. And to Masaki, if you're watching this, I miss you so, so, so much. Thank you for the gifts, and I hope to see you very soon. Arigatou gozaimashita.